So imagine you're the strongest guy in the village. You've got muscles for days, a fearsome reputation, and everyone respects you. Life's pretty sweet, right? But there's a catch. You're absolutely terrified of being called lazy, like your dad, who is basically the king of procrastination and bad financial decisions. That, my friends, is the life of Okonkwo, the hero, or should I say anti-hero, of today's story. Let me tell you, this guy Okonkwo is so determined not to turn into his dad, Unoka, that he overcompensates like crazy. While Unoka was out there playing the flute and borrowing money left and right, Okonkwo's out here winning wrestling matches, building a fortune, and thinking emotions are for the weak. It's like he's constantly saying, Dad, I will never be you. Now, life in the Umuofia clan is peaceful, but because peace is boring, they decide to stir the pot a bit by getting involved in a tribal dispute. Long story short, they end up getting a 15-year-old boy named Ike Mafuna as a peace offering. Okonkwo takes this kid in, and spoiler alert, he's a way better son than his actual kid Noya, who's got more of Unoka's lazy vibes. And Okonkwo's like, finally, a son I don't want to disown. Ikimafuna's out here bonding with Noya, turning him into a real man's man, exactly what Okonkwo wanted. Things are going great. Until, well, things fall apart. Because nothing good lasts forever, right? After three years, the Oracle declares that Ikimafuna has to go. And by go, I mean be killed. Now, Okonkwo is told, hey, don't get involved, the boy calls you father. But Okonkwo's toxic masculinity says, nah, I can't look weak in front of the guys. So what does he do? He strikes the final blow himself because what's better than emotional trauma? I'll do it myself. That, my friends, is when things really start to unravel. Okonkwo's guilt is so bad that he sinks into a deep funk. And just when you think it can't get worse, during a funeral, Okonkwo accidentally shoots a teenager. Yikes! So now not only is he emotionally wrecked, but he's also banished from the village for seven years because, you know, Accidental manslaughter isn't exactly something you just walk away from. So he packs up the family and heads to his mom's village, where he sulks for a good seven years, plotting his comeback. Meanwhile, in Umuofia, the white men show up with their Bibles and colonial agendas. First, they're all like, hey, have you heard about this guy named Jesus? And before you know it, they've got converts everywhere, including Okonkwo's son and Woye, which makes Okonkwo say, great, just great, heart. now my son's gone because soft. My heart is so big, people betray me, and I keep forgiving them. Okonkwo returns after seven years and finds that the village has changed more than he expected. The Christians have built a church, and the villagers are torn between their old traditions and this new religion. Naturally, Okonkwo wants to fight back. Things reach a boiling point when one of the converts disrespects the village gods. The villagers retaliate, but Okonkwo is itching for war, convinced his people will rise up and drive the white men out. But, plot twist, his fellow villagers aren't exactly on board with going to war. When Okonkwo kills a colonial messenger expecting everyone to cheer him on, they don't. So feeling utterly defeated, Okonkwo decides to take matters into his own hands. And by that, I mean he hangs himself, which is a huge Why cultural taboo. Kill? Why? Why? To humiliate me? And that's the story of Things Fall Apart. A tale of tradition versus change, toxic masculinity, and the tragic downfall of a man who couldn't adapt to a rapidly changing world. Chinua Achebe does an incredible job weaving the personal and the political. Okonkwo isn't just a man struggling with his own demons. He represents an entire society on the brink of collapse, the title is a perfect reflection of everything in this book. The community falls apart, the family falls apart, and ultimately, Okonkwo falls apart. Also, Achebe gives us a glimpse into pre-colonial African life, something that wasn't widely written about in English literature at the time. He flips the script, showing us that African cultures were complex and rich long before the white men showed up. It's no wonder this book has become a classic, not just in African literature, but worldwide. So if you're into stories about tragic heroes, culture clashes, or just want to see what happens when a man refuses to deal with his emotions, Things Fall Apart is for you. And trust me, it's not just a book you read, it's a book you feel. Plus, you'll probably come away from it thankful that your biggest problem isn't living in constant fear of becoming your dad. Unless, well maybe it is. Thanks for watching. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment about your favorite part of Things Fall Apart. And if you've read it, let me know. Did Okonkwo's downfall seem inevitable to you, or could he have turned things around? See you in the next video.